Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up the next part of our IK system. Um, what we're attempting to do in this one here is, um, right now we have the trace working with our functions, and so now we need to actually pass the trace and the calculations for it to our anim blueprint. And then from the animation blueprint, um, that will modify the skeletal uh, IK system in order for our foot to actually land in the place that we traced for and do other modifications with the animations. So let's get started. First things first, we need to go and actually open our animation blueprint because we need to add a couple things to it. Now those brand new to animation blueprints, basically what they are is um, a set of instructions that controls the animation of the character um, and all of its really all of its animation function from running to jumping to any other things that you can that you have this also includes skeletal controls so the fact that we're making that we're uh, going to be changing up the skeleton and that we want uh, the foot to move over here for our IK system and so on and so forth that also is controlled by the animation blueprint there's two parts to it there's the event graph and the animation graph the event graph is what you see here um, this is where we input our variables and stuff that we plan to be using in the animation blueprint. Um, then we have the anim graph, which is the one that actually controls the pose of the character. So if we go in here, you can see that there's this idle run area, jump start, the actual like while you're in the air, and the end jump. We won't be playing too much with this part. In fact, most of the stuff that will be um, focusing on is right here at this beginning default machine. Um, so here we go. Um, go to the event graph and we'll actually be adding a whole bunch of variables. Uh, the variables are there's some vectors and some floats. So let's go over here and let's add our first variable which is going to be a vector. Oops. Um, which is the right effector. This is for the right IK system. We need to add the uh, left effector. We need to add the location of our knee because remember we have the knee socket. We need to add our right knee. Um, we have our alphas. Um, now the alphas is essentially how much we want this IK system to influence the animation. Um, so it's going to be a float. So we have our um, um, left alpha and our right alpha. And then we also have our hip offset. Since we want our hip to go down and um, you know make it look more realistic. Otherwise it will stretch. I mentioned that in the principles video if you haven't watched that yet. Okay, so now that we have those set up, let's go back to the third person character and change this around because this was just for demonstration. Now comes the real thing. So in our tick graph, first we need to, let's just remove all of this. First we need to um, get the instance. So let's bring out mesh and get anim instance so that it actually gets the animation blueprint we're going to cast to the third person anim blueprint over here. That's our first pass here. Now we wanted to actually do the IK um, foot traces. So we have the IK foot trace. The socket name, it will be the right foot socket. Trace distance will be 150. 
Uh, next step, we're going to um, we're going to be setting the right effector. Now, unfortunately, the IK doesn't work exactly as we want it, so I need to actually modify it by a vector, the z-axis by 10. This is so that we don't get excessive weirdness in the foot. Um, so now we need to set the um, the right thing. Now, the right effector, because we placed it in our anim blueprint, we need to grab it from this cast that we have here. So actually, I'm going to just drag this over here and create a reroute node so that I don't have to keep dragging from here. You'll get a lot of weird spaghetti strings everywhere if you don't do that. Um, and then from here, we can set the right effector. And that will be this. So that's going to be our next pass. Now from here, we are going to be setting a couple if statements. Um, the first if statement that we're going to be setting is if the trace actually hit. If the trace hit, we want to set our alpha, uh, well, technically we want to call another if statement to check velocity to see if we're fast enough to actually modify anything. If not, we don't want the animation to, or we don't want our IK system to work. So over here, we need to um, set um, the IK alpha right to zero. So if it didn't hit, don't set any alpha. If it did hit, we need another if statement. And this if statement, we can just say <clears throat> if the um, if the speed is greater than a certain number. So we can go over here. There's a speed variable already in the um, anim blueprint. So over here we can just uh, type in speed, get speed, and say if that is greater than or equal to 15. So this is our second if statement. Now if that if statement is true, then we're going to be setting our right IK system. If it is not, or if, sorry, if this is less than the velocity of 15, then we're actually going to set the right IK um, to the max, which, not to the max as in one, because you'll get some weird stuff, but I found out that 0.85 actually is a pretty good number to use. So we can just drag that here. Now, to get our last one, uh, our character is going to be moving quite a bit. And so in the movement, if I just bring out paint here, in the movement, when we want our characters to stand here, we want our IKs to actually be working. However, when our character is like this and his foot is more or less, oh man, this is bad. Foot is more or less in the air um, we want our IK to not be affected, otherwise it's going to kind of go like this and just drag on the floor. So we want to um, essentially create a, a constantly changing variable to calculate for how we want our alpha. So <clears throat> we do that like this. First we need to get the socket location of our character. So just drag out the mesh, get socket location, and we're doing the right foot socket, right foot socket. So we get the location, we'll be subtracting that by our effector so that we get the height of that. Vector by vector. We're going to get the length of that vector, so essentially turning it into a, a float. Um, 
And I found that with the animation that we have here, 34 is a very good number to use. So over here, we are going to divide it by 34 and multiply it, um, or sorry, subtract it by one. So. And essentially what I'm doing over here is um, I'm saying get the height between the lower value and the upper value so that you have the, the kind of like a small constant moving number between where it hits and how high the animation goes. Um, and 34 over here is height wise um, a good number to use. I'm dividing it by that so that I can get a decimal number between 0 and 1, hence what we will set our alpha, 1 being 100%, 0 being 0%. This negative 1 will take that and reverse it so that when it's touching the floor, it's at 100, it's basically at 100%, and when it's, uh, when it's the highest point, it's at our 0, so that there's no alpha affected. But because 100% doesn't necessarily work, we're actually going to clamp the float, setting the minimum value to zero and the maximum value um, to 0.61. Then we're going to add it, or then I found that if you um, if you average it out, it actually turns out kind of nice. Um, so I did that next. But technically over here what you can do is you can set it the right IK system to this and that is our next bit. So we'll do that for now and then we'll add the uh, averages later. Um, and yeah. In the next video, we'll be doing the other side, which is essentially exactly the same, and then we'll actually put it into our Anim Blueprint and get it all situated, and it should be, it should be working by then. See you then.